Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of RPG Radio. My name is Windback and we are playing Diablo 4 today on the level 70 capstone dungeon, the Temple of the Fallen. This dungeon is going to be your uh, waypoint up to level 4, tier 4 of difficulty, which is Torment. So there is a lot to cover about the mechanics of the dungeon and the boss at the end. So buckle up, put your big boy pants on, you're going to need them. Also, if you are already familiar with the way the dungeon works, if you've done plenty of runs of the first couple parts uh, on your own, don't need any help with that. I do have a short little guide on the boss mechanics as well up on the channel, so you can go check that out. Let me know if you saw it or ignored it. I'm here for your comments, but I'm also here to help out, so feel free to like, comment, subscribe your heart out. It is a YouTube video after all, so feel free to dump a couple of those algorithmic parameters my way, unless you don't want to. It's a free internet. Do what makes your heart happy. When you first come into this dungeon, you may notice right away that the dungeon gives you two paths to take. Both of them are going to be required to finish the dungeon, but which one you pick first is going to really figure out how easy your, uh, your opening run is. I've done both, uh, both the Path of the Indolent and the Path of the Weak. But I will say the Path of the Indolent is much easier because the Path of the Weak has some mechanics, or has the mechanic to get you killed nightmarishly fast. It is kind of ridiculous how quickly the damage can ramp up. Regardless, either way, when you're doing this dungeon, you want to kill lots of monsters as quickly as possible. So I really would not recommend sitting around looking at loot because the timer ticking in the background is going to tick up while you are standing still doing nothing. So, that being said, let's talk specifically about the uh, the indolent debuff and how that works against your character. Essentially, the curse of the indolent, every five seconds you're going to get a stack. Every one of these stacks up to 50 is going to increase the duration of crowd control effects on your character, as you can see right now cc lasts a long time if you get hit with it uh, the way that you're going to counteract this is by killing enemies enemies killed reduce the amount of time or the amount of stacks on your curse of the indolent so the more monsters you kill the less time you're cc'd down to the normal amount of cc time the reason that this is such a bad thing for this uh, wing of the dungeon is that this this particular path is full of uh, fallen lunatics who will run up and absolutely incinerate your entire health bar if you are not paying attention. Uh, so I definitely recommend some strong CC or at least some really good ranged damage to pop them before they get close. You don't want to be in the blast radius, but it is pretty easy to dodge them once you see their effect go off. So as long as you're keeping your eyes open, you shouldn't have too much trouble dealing with the lunatics. That's ultimately why I think this path is the easier one to start with, because the lunatics don't necessarily deal damage to you unless you let them. And the CC, uh, the CC increase in in this wing of things is uh, a lot easier to deal with than the other side. Also, once you get to the end of the dungeon, you'll knock down this tower to get the wing boss, I guess, is the first mini boss of the dungeon, and all you have to do is kill him to move on. It's not very difficult, it's just a fallen overseer. He is going to react the same way that all other monsters do when it comes to CC and simple stuff. So just kill him, make it quick, get the stone back to the beginning of the dungeon so you can start doing the difficult part of the dungeon, which is uh, the Curse of the Weak. Now, specifically because of the Curse of the Weak, I would recommend going into this dungeon a little bit closer to level 70. Once you hit 68 specifically, the game will open up a, uh, a quest for you that'll actually lead you out here and that's when the game thinks that you're close enough to handle it even if you're not 70. I tried this at 65 
and the difference between that level and 68 is honestly pretty significant. Uh, during this portion of the dungeon, some of the uh, the enemies like the oppressors or the, the bigger cannibals were actually one-shotting me from off screen and you couldn't even see that stuff coming. Uh, now, even if they do do that type of thing, the, uh, the level difference and some of the increases that we've gone with for the incense are enough to keep us alive and uh, basically not die through the, the first part of the dungeon. The boss is another story entirely, but I would highly recommend coming into this dungeon at least higher level than uh, what you're probably thinking. Unless you're a ranged character or a rogue or somebody with extremely high amounts of damage, um, playing this as a barbarian or a druid is probably much, 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 much more difficult than playing it as a sork or a rogue. I'd say even probably a necromancer if you're doing the right type of build. But let's talk about uh, the uh, curse of the week. Exactly like the Curse of the Indolent, Curse of the Week is going to give you one stack every five seconds up to a total of 50. That is going to increase the damage that you take by 1% every five seconds up to a maximum of 50% additional damage, which is pretty nuts because lots of the stuff in this dungeon can already do pretty obscene amounts of damage to you. This is, again, the comparison over to uh, Torment, which is tier 4 of difficulty, and I can tell you from first-hand experience, this dungeon does not do the next tier of difficulty any justice at all. There is just almost no way to survive some of the stuff coming out of tier 4, so if you're having trouble with the Capstone Dungeon, Definitely grind out some more levels because it is only going to get exponentially worse as you go on. That being said, dealing with the Curse of the Week is pretty simple. It's the same thing as the Curse of the Indolent. You want to kill as many monsters as possible, but there are a few exceptions in this dungeon because while the Fallen Lunatics on the Indolent side are very easy to deal with, there are more enemy types on this side that are much more difficult. Uh, the Succubi specifically with their arranged shadow damage homing missiles are really, really annoying and I definitely say prioritize killing them if there's more than a couple around. The next big ones are going to be your, uh, your big cannibal bruisers, the huge guys with the double axes. Uh, they have a huge CC wind up. It's easy to dodge if you see it coming, but if they hit you with it, you're basically dead because you're going to be CC'd for a long time and all the other enemies are just going to lay into you. Not only that, but those big boy cannibals are the ones with the off-screen uh, stomp, shout, freeze. It's I don't know what exactly the move is called, but they will do it. There is a big wind up, but they can do it off screen, so you may not even see it coming. And it covers about half the screen in distance. So, when they do that, they yell, they run forward, they throw out a huge cone, and that damage, if you're not efficiently prepped for the dungeon, will one-shot you. It is incredibly frustrating, and luckily with the levels and the uh, the 500 extra health incense coming in clutch, we were able to survive at least one or two of those and uh, clear the dungeon. You can see that right there. It's a massive cone of damage, and he can do it in any position he wants. I, that was basically 75% of my life bar, and if I were just a couple levels shorter, I'd be dead. So, take that as you will. It is the worst part about that part of the dungeon. Otherwise, it'd just be, you know, slapping down succubi and uh, singling out oppressors. You do want to single target the oppressors when they come up in the dungeon because those guys will do crazy amounts of damage with their fire. Uh, as far as the, the trial of the week here, it's really not that difficult, especially if you are a, a barbarian with infinite leaps and lots of dashes. 
It's just a survival of the fittest type thing. If you don't do enough damage to clear the room, that's no big deal. You just gotta wait it out. And it's not really going to affect the progression of the rest of the dungeon because, you know, you just had one little objective. Uh, killing the enemies is more XP and gear focused anyway. So don't worry if you can't kill them all. All you gotta do is wait out at the timer. No big deal there. Uh, as far as the rest of the dungeon goes, though, the Cathedral of Flesh is going to use both the Curse of the Indolent and the Curse of the Weak at the same time. So if you were having a difficult time with either of them on their own, things are going to be much more difficult here. You'll have a combination of all the monsters. You've got both the curses going on at the same time. So you need to absolutely slaughter everything and I would recommend doing it in a very methodical path. If you see those big skulls on the map, uh, stay away from them until you have cleared all the riffraff out up leading to them. The, again, you can see the, uh, the barbarians or the cannibals going for some pretty crazy far away uh, conal damage skill ability. Whatever it is, they're hitting you with the ice cream cone from two miles away, and it is a surefire death sentence if there are more than enough uh, enemies around to deal damage to you while you're CC'd and low on health. It's disgusting. The whole objective in this part of the, uh, the dungeon is going to be focused around collecting animus from all of your big boy baddies. And that ultimately isn't exactly difficult as long as, again, you're taking the methodic approach to uh, methodic approach to killing them. One at a time, weed everybody out the best you can, and ultimately you'll get enough animus collected to open the door lock. I think you have to kill... I want to say there's six. There are six big cannibals that require... Uh, death to get their animus so just like another animus dungeon there are uh, well there's a lot of running back and forth that you'll be doing to finish this particular objective it's not a big deal it's probably not the most fun way to progress a dungeon if I had to be honest but it probably does come with bigger chunks of XP because you're killing a lot more elites and uh, you have to use their uh, their essence to you know open the gates so uh hook guys i don't necessarily think they're difficult enemies they're pretty tanky but the hooks are very slow very easy to dodge probably just you know dodging them like normal as long as you're moving around and you're not standing in one place too often no big deal there they can probably hook you into some uh lunatic shenanigans but nothing especially worrisome i think i've, I've never been hit by a hook uh, in the dungeon or out, so, you know, I couldn't tell you. Uh, but anyway, as far as the, uh, the rest of the Cathedral of Flesh, the last part goes, things are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is kill those enemies, unlock the gate, get to the boss. So, let's just speed it up, right? Let's get to the chunk of the, uh, the dungeon that everybody is actually concerned about, which is so much worse than everything up until this point. Now, I do feel it's kind of important to mention that some of the Animus Carriers, the uh, the elite cannibals in this part of the dungeon, require a little bit of uh, footsies. You gotta keep away, you do have to kite a little bit, unless your damage is just so obscene that you can kill them before they do anything. Specifically, the Freezy and Fire type uh, cannibals are going to be pretty difficult because the fire shoots a lot, and getting frozen means you're CC'd for their big one-shot ability, and things just aren't going to be easy. The uh, doorkeepers here are probably even less difficult than the cannibals up to this point, 
so I wouldn't worry too much about that, but let's kick down the door and talk about the most disturbing boss up to this point in the game. This boss is going to, uh, you're going to benefit a lot from having fire resistance against Elias, and you are going to benefit a lot from having your uh, stagger abilities, your CC abilities. You're going to want to get a lot of stuff going on him to CC him pretty quickly, because you'll see after this first really sad attempt is done, uh, things are going to get into a bit of a pattern, and dealing damage to him is the quickest way to get this stuff over with. He does have a lot of uh, really telegraphed abilities, but some of them do require some understanding to figure out how to dodge. Uh, specifically, there's going to be a couple things that happen that you, you really just need to remember to do. You're going to need a specific strategy. Going ham on him through his first stagger, I don't really think is a great idea. Uh, and just like that, the first attempt is down. We lost lots and lots and lots of health to big AoE abilities that span the entire screen and were respawning really far away. I'd also suggest clearing out all the enemies leading up to his door because if they aren't dead, they're going to steal a bunch of health off of you uh, in the interim leading up here. And you don't want to have to use a potion because you do want all nine if you've got nine or more uh, for this boss because spamming potions sometimes is the only way to get uh, out of some of the sticky situations that he puts you in but let's talk about the mechanics specifically every time you come in here Elias is going to start with one uh, big fan of fireballs just like that you can see that the the fan is only covering about uh, I think 270 degrees worth of circle it is a dodgeable but there's just nowhere for me to run with that one. Uh, but that fan is something that you have to dash through at the right time. You have to jump over if you're playing a Barbarian with Leap. And, uh, man, my mouse just wants to zoom in. I really need to, in I need to get a new one. Anyway, uh, the, the fan of Fireballs is really easy to dodge as long as you are doing it correctly, timing it correctly. Specifically with the Leap Barbarian, all you have to do is just jump over them, which is really nice. He summoned the uh, the oppressors really, really early, and this is the stage that I'm doing this boss and thinking I can kill him while he's staggered, but I actually don't have the ability because his minions are doing such an obscene amount of damage. I mentioned it in the short, if he has got demons summoned, you need to kill them first because holy balls they deal way too much damage for a uh, an underleveled character to deal with i mean if you're not over 70 you're probably going to get hit and chunked for tons of damage specifically the succubus are going to throw out uh tracking fireballs those hurt super hard if the oppressors aren't dead they're going to run up to you and breathe fire all over you which can deal your entire health bar if you let them uh, their auto attacks for the oppressors also hit really hard. The smaller demons, the lashers, whatever they're called, they are uh, pretty gross as well, but they can only really surround you and hold you in place for uh, Elias's attacks themselves. So easier to kill, but I would still deal with them because you don't want to take any free damage, just like me missing that dodge uh, while those bad guys are going off. Anyway, as far as Elias' other attacks, he's got his his basic attack is going to be his, uh, his three-shot homing missiles, and that is relatively easy to dodge as long as you're going in the right direction. You want to run parallel to those fireballs because they do track, but they track your most recent position from where they fire. They don't track you permanently. So as long as you're running uh, perpendicular to them, you can dodge them pretty easily. Or you can just do what I do and uh, dash into his flower of fireballs, eating all that damage. 
That second fireball ability that he does, where they just shoot out in all directions, is also easy to dodge, but you can't be close to him when he does it. So, when you see him whip out his little fl uh, flower fireball attack, you want to dash away, and then you want to start, um, again, running perpendicular to the fireball that is closest to you. After that fireball fires off, you're just going to run towards it, back down in that direction for the easy dodge because all of the fireballs behind that one are going at other angles. His summons for the, uh, the different types of minions also do damage. Obviously getting hit with the, the literal little lasher demon um, explosions isn't a good thing, but the, uh, the oppressor summon is your big opportunity to deal damage to him, especially if you are on the inside of the, the triangle. Uh, the oppressors are going to summon at the tips, and if he is anywhere near you and you're not standing on that fire, you've got big opportunities to just drop full combos, all your vulnerability, all your big, big damage right on top of him. So it's a really, really strong opportunity. At this point in the, uh, the attempts for Elias, I'm really telling myself minions have to die and there is no point in uh, letting a stagger or using a stagger to hit Elias, at least the first time, if there are succubi up. So when he gets staggered on the first go round, we're going to try to focus on clearing the minions and then use whatever time is left over, just walking into all those fireballs around him, getting kind of flustered, obviously really <laughs> angry, but still learning, you know, you gotta, just get hit by all the damage in order to know what not to get hit by, right? Anyway, um, you can see there's absolutely maddening amounts of them. Again, there's so much fire on the screen. We're trying to jump towards him, trying to stagger him so you can get some uh, get some space to kill the, the, the succubi again, but it's just not happening. It is so difficult when there are this many because he's got so much space. They're basically a meat shield. So I wanted to stagger him to kill his minions. It wasn't working. Let's try it again. Hopefully this time we'll have a little bit more success. The good news is that if you die on this boss to the point that your gear is broken, you do have enough time to go back to town, uh, repair, and just come right on back. The only thing preventing you from doing that is your money. So as long as you don't run out of money repairing on this boss, you'll be just fine. Anyway, this one's for all the bananas. Trying to dodge all of his stuff. We're doing pretty well right now, jumping over his initial salvo of fireballs. Minions are dying relatively quick. Not getting hit by too many of his homing fireballs as well. Dodging that flower of fireballs too. Things are looking up. The uh, dodge mechanic kicking in a little bit. I disagree. I must have had just like a stray toe inside that little ball. He's got his stagger up though. Time to wipe out all of his ranged support because they cannot survive if we are going to live. Easy dodges again on the flower of fireballs. This is the perfect opportunity. Summoning the, summoning the oppressors for us just to lay damage into the man. He stands there and grandstands while summoning them for quite a long time, so you've got big opportunities to jump in to his next set of fireballs, just like me. Uh, but the oppressors have to be the next thing to die because, again, when they get up close, when they deal that, you know, fire breath damage, they're probably worse, uh, worse damage uh, than he is uh, when he's using his big fireball attacks. So we've got one more to get rid of. Actually, I think it's already dead. We wiped it out with an upheaval. He's gotten staggered for the second time, and just like that, a casual 22% of his health bar goes down with a fully charged death blow, saying, Eat my balls, Elias. It's time for you to go. And that is it for the level 70 capstone dungeon. Now we are up into Torment for the big boy territory for the game. Things are going to get much more difficult from here on out. So I will see you in the next video in which 
that takes place. Peace out, everybody. See you next time.